Hi guys, Jimmy Fluke here from Apex Racing Team, Porsche Tycor Esports Super Cup driver. And today we're taking a look at the newly updated GT3 cars for the 2022 Season 2 build on iRacing. Uh, the main question that we have to ask is, if you haven't been in the GT3 cars for a while or haven't liked them for a while, um, should you now get back into them? Um, so hopefully over the next few minutes, um, I'll be able to set you through all the changes and see whether uh, it's a good idea to get back into them or not. So let's get stuck in. The main changes that we have are primarily to the tyres and a little bit on downforce. Um, so the tyre properties and parameters have changed, which I recently do like to keep things quite vague in what they say with this. Um, but um, effectively, yeah, we're on a new tyre model. Uh, front tyre section width has been adjusted slightly, so um, I assume that's to uh, make them larger. Um, so we've got a little bit more front end grip, especially at high speed. Minimum cool tyre pressures have been increased to 24 PSI. So um, what that effectively means is you know, the pressures you know, whilst driving are higher. Uh, higher pressures give you more grip at higher speed and less grip at lower speed. Um, highly detailed and more realistic aerodynamic model updates. Um, so the whole aerodynamics of all the GT3 cars have been massively reworked. You know, loading old setups and just trying to drive immediately will either result in, well, the, the setup not even passing tech or driving quite strangely. So um, we do sort of have to start from scratch for the most part. Uh, fuel um, has been updated to be brought in line with current IMSA standards. So we have a smaller tank uh, and a slightly uh, reduced fuel rate. So we're still getting to roughly an hour. We've got a small uh, diff change. Um, so we can include the number of plates, either four or six. Um, it's just a minor uh, adjustment there. Uh, it doesn't make a huge difference in terms of how the car drives. Suspension, spring and anti-roll bar rate range uh, ranges, sorry, have been modified to reflect the platform control required by the updated aerodynamic models. So the only cars that haven't actually been massively changed with this are the Audi and the Lamborghini. Um, everything else is definitely on the stiffer side of things uh, to reflect the increased downforce that we ultimately have um, and the increase in grip that we have at high speed. Uh, all cars received BOP adjustments to suit the class Y changes to tyre and aerodynamic models. Um, it's still very early days. We're in day three now of uh, getting up to speed with uh, the new build. Um, we don't know exactly how it's going to pan out across a wide variety of tracks yet. Um, my testing so far has just been at Sebring. Uh, front toe adjustments have now been correctly li limited. Um, ultimately, I don't think that's changed things too much. Uh, and then we've got some garage tool tips and everything set up updates as well. Okay, so we're now looking at the uh, telemetry, comparing uh, the BMW M4 GT3 in last season's build to this season's build. And uh, I'm using the exact same conditions as I used in a data pack that I did last season, uh, just for the most accurate comparison. Uh, and I can, as we can see, 1.1 uh, seconds difference between uh, the old build and the new build, with the new build being faster. Um, so you can sort of see with the sectors up at the top here, uh, those that are in red or with a positive number value is quicker um, in the new build and in the uh, blue uh, we have uh, what is quicker in the old build. So you can sort of see quite a sizable difference uh, in speed in turn one here. And this is obviously one of the high speed uh, corners that we'll uh, come across where uh, you have some braking input so, you know, a quick fourth gear corner at, you know, 180 kph or so. Uh, and at points, we are 15 kph quicker on the brakes on the way into the corner and just driving it in that little bit deeper and being more aggressive with our throttle pickup because the car is so stable now at high speed. So that allows us to carry much more speed all the way through the entire, uh, you know, corner. Um, in, in, its, in its entirety and uh, that, that gives us you know, a whopping three and a half tenth gain just in one corner alone. Um, we've got similar um, information you know, here in uh, you know, particularly turn three as it, as it turns out where we're able to be just much more aggressive um, in terms of leaning on the uh, outside tyre through you know, lateral load. Um, so that's where we're gaining all our time in that sector. But as I mentioned previously, um, the uh, low speed grip is 
a little bit reduced in this current build. So uh, in the previous build, we actually do gain a little bit of time actually on the brakes there, just right on Apex is where we gain all that time. Um, and as we pick up the throttle and get our drive off the corner. So um, that's where we do have some advantages and we can sort of see through uh, the middle part of the lap. It's fairly close up until we get to Tower Corner um, where again, because it's a little bit of a quicker corner than the, uh, the sort of three main corners, or well, sorry, two main corners before it, um, you know, we can carry just that little bit more speed, uh, nice and aggressive on our throttle pickup on, on exit. We can lean on the tire just a little bit harder. We gain a substantial amount of time in the uh, penultimate sector of the lap, uh, the Indianapolis Le Mans complex. And so we're able just to carry more speed on entry pretty much everywhere. And same thing again. So even with a, a slightly uh, lower minimum speed through the uh, last right here, I was able to be more aggressive with throttle pickup once again. Could lean on the tire and get good drive coming off the corner. And lastly, uh, Sunset Bend, uh, another very clear example of where the increase in high speed grip is uh, very prevalent. So we're able to brake later, brake harder, uh, and, and then still pick up a, a nice early throttle, a nice strong throttle. Uh, and get our drive off the corner and still actually carry more speed off the corner as well. So um, through the long loaded corners, um, that's where you'll find most of the time to be gained. At a track where it's a lot of um, tight hairpins, for example, uh, you won't be able to see quite as much of an advantage, um, but that's uh, the, the main difference that we have between uh, the old build and the new build in terms of looking uh, sector by sector. So what I'm going to do for you now is sort of take a, a sort of slow speed lap around Sebring and sort of show um, where, uh, in terms of the driver, what we're doing differently um, across the lap um, with the new build here. So um, make the start here just on the pit straight. I'm going to keep it nice and slow and I'll do my best to try and explain everything. So uh, driving in a straight line, that hasn't changed. Uh, that's all perfectly normal. Um, but into turn one, we will notice quite a big change. So we used to break pretty much as the seam started. Now we're breaking probably a car length or so later, and we're very aggressive in terms of feeling uh, the, the car through the corner. Like we're really chucking the car in rather than worrying about the car sort of stepping out. Like we've got tons and tons of grip. Um, the line though for the corner hasn't really changed, just we're more aggressive on entry. On the brakes for uh the sequence here um not much has really changed the reduction in low speed grip um is probably mitigated by the difference in um sort of how the car is sort of just on the brakes in general it is just a little bit more efficient but through this section here um we'll have to worry a little bit more about getting the, the nose pointed in here and then getting your drive off the corner because the car feels a little bit mushy for lack of a better word, um, through the slower speed corners. Um, so being um, precise on turning, knowing that the car is not quite as agile at such speeds is quite important. Uh, down into the hairpin, uh, we're braking probably a meter or two later here than what we had done before, just right on the cones there. Down into first gear, and the same thing again, it is a little bit tricky to get the nose pointed into the corner, but we do have slightly better uh, longitudinal traction, at least I feel that we do. So we're able to run in slightly lower um, traction control assistance there. Um, and that's a corner where you're going to most likely notice it. Coming into turn 10, um, again, sort of breaking a little bit later. Um, we want to turn in quite early while still on the brakes here. Uh, the increase in tire temperature um, that you'll get sort of on the brakes there isn't going to um, affect the car quite as much as what it used to. So we can sort of brake and turn a little bit more rather than just braking in a dead straight line and then turning the car in. We can be more aggressive again on entry. Uh, tower corner, you will sort of notice a little bit more understeer here. The car isn't quite as pointy and as, as responsive through here. So we may need to back up the corner just a fraction actually compared to how we used to. And um, just to mitigate that. Um, we're, we're probably actually braking at the same point, but the feeling within the car is to back up the car or back up the uh, entry just a little bit to make sure that you're precise through the apex. Uh, similar sort of thing through here. We're probably braking a little bit later, but um, again, the car wants to push a little bit. You do still want to 
you know, take the same lines that we used to. Um, but the car doesn't feel like it wants to dig into the apex as much as what it used to. Um, but on exit on this particular corner, you can get away with the slide on exit as you come back over the curb. Um, that's uh, particularly beneficial uh, on the longer run because this place is uh, quite prone to chewing tires. So um, with the tires not being quite as sensitive to temperature now, um, in terms of the grip that it offers, you can get away with the slide there. And then Sunset Bend, we're able to break pretty much at the one cone there, which is a lot earlier, or sorry, a lot later than what we used to. Um, but the rest of the corner then follows a very similar pattern. So bleed off the brake, turn in, and get nice and tight to the wall and drive off the corner as we used to. So yeah, that's a, a nice sort of slow lap of Ryan Sebring sort of explaining the changes that we've uh, had to make for this new build. So hopefully that uh, gives you a better insight on the new update for the GT3 cars uh, for 2022 Season 2 on iRacing. Um, for my own personal thoughts, um, ultimately if you uh, prefer a car that's you know very much pointy and on edge uh, and very direct into the corner then maybe it's not the best feeling for you. If you were struggling with the feeling of the GT3 cars in terms of their snappiness and how direct that they were then the new updates are, will be most uh, enjoyable for you because of the extra stability that we have uh, both at high and low speed. Um, but either way um, if you do want to get signed up to the Apex Racing Academy for data packs uh, then you can use my referral link in the description description and uh, yeah hopefully you will then get 10% uh, off on your first order with Apex Racing Academy. So that's all for me, uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one. Today we're taking a look at the uh, GT3 cars that have been recently updated for the 2022 Season 2 build. Say that quickly five times in a row. Do you want me to leave that in? Ah, that's my half. So, uh...